Let me show you how I might use these files about circle theorems. Here is the Jojoba book. Uh, there's quite a lot of content in this one because there's a lot of circle theorems that people might need to know at GCSE and traditionally often described as a hard topic to teach or possibly boring. Actually, it could be super fascinating. Let me show you one way I might start uh, or offer some revision. Uh, in the book, I'm going to click on the circle theorems chapter and you can see them all laid out here, but I might start with these eight circle theorems and I'm going to full screen this so it's sitting there uh, with no other distractions in the classroom. Now this is a super busy file, there's lots of stuff going on, but the key is that it's moving and that provides quite a lot of interest and fascination. As long as you manage it carefully, you could cause overload if you're not careful, but in my experience, a class looking at this diagram suddenly has lots of questions uh, and you can choose to harness those questions or ask questions for your own. And if you want a quick on the fly resource for a circle theorem, you can just take your mouse um, and zoom in. Let's say we wanted to look at this uh, idea about a semicircle. I'm using the middle button um, of my mouse to drag and move the screen around and I can zoom in and out with a mouse wheel or whatever device you're using. Uh, and if I quickly want to go to another circle theorem like the one about cyclic quadrilaterals, I'm zooming in and zooming out. And so there's something valuable about being able to quickly move between the circle theorems, and I hope that's useful. You can always reset with the top right button here. Um, let's look at some of the other detailed files. I press escape to get out of that, and I can see the menu at the side here. So let's look at the angles in the center. Here is a file exclusively for that, and again, you can full screen it, click in on that. Here's how I might use it. I might have this file just moving on the screen. Again, the point that it's moving is quite important. You cannot do that with a static diagram that either you've drawn on the board or in a textbook. You could do it if you draw it in GeoGebra or Desmos yourself. What I might do though is ask people to comment on what they think is happening. Because it's moving, they will look at it for longer than maybe you expect and they will ask questions and I suspect some might even spot a connection between the angles that are visible on the screen. By the way, these are interactive files, so you can move the points and the angles will change if you change where they fit. But the point we're looking at here is there looks to be a connection between the angle in the center and the angle of the circumference, which I hope is what you're expecting. Uh, and if people have conjectures about that, you could hide one of the angles uh, and then maybe move it around and say, right, what do you think the angle missing in here is? Get someone to shout it out, use mini whiteboards, turn it on, did they get it right? Repeat, hide that one, move something else around, change it. This is not meant to be sort of do this script. This is an interactive file which you can use to get your own style in the classroom. Uh, maybe they guess this is going to be roughly 70 and lo and behold it is. And then you could maybe ask the students to write down, maybe mini whiteboards, maybe on paper, I don't know, a description of the fact that's happening here. In this case, I've described it as the angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. This is not meant to be a formal statement. I avoid using the words subtended you can choose whether to discuss those things with the students or not. Uh, but these tick boxes hopefully give you flexibility about when and where you show them the facts and the angle things here. Uh, one other thing to mention, you can always pause the animation with the bottom left pause button uh, and you can full screen it with the bottom right thing here. The only other thing to talk about, there's eight different circle theorems here, but there's also a discussion of the proofs. So if I click on the chapter of proofs here, you can see that I've got attempts at trying to prove these things and that's not always required at GCSE, but students do, in my experience, like to know that there's an answer to the question of why is that true? Uh, and here's why, for example, this one is uh, the first one in the list for me because once you've proved this one, you can prove a whole bunch of the others by sort of talking to this one. And here's a visual version of this. And there's nothing on screen to sort of help you through this. So this is the sort of thing that you'd have to have an idea and comfort about before you talk to a class about it. But let's just stop it moving for now and I'll talk you through how I might use this. First of all, it could move, which keeps it general. And I've drawn a line down here, which extends down to this point F. And I've also drawn a line from O to D here, which is parallel to this edge. That's what that arrow means. And another one, double arrow parallel to that one. So let me talk you through what's happening. This blue angle here is equal to that one because this is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles work like that. Uh, but then once you've established that, things go quite quickly because that blue angle is the same as that blue angle because they are what they call corresponding angles in the parallel line stuff at GCSE. They correspond, they are the same side of the parallel line. So they're equal. And Nicely using the other parallel line famous fact, this blue angle and this blue angle are equal because they are alternate angles from these parallel lines here. So that means the angle there is one blue and the angle here is two blues. Exactly the same argument happens for the reds. And here I can show you that if the top one is red and blue, then the one at the center is double red and double blue. So the whole angle is double the one at the edge. And it's a visual proof. I haven't written it down formally, but in terms of convincing a class, particularly if they know their parallel line facts, it's a quite useful way to do it. There are always many other ways to prove things. So the point of these files is that you can have a try at proving the things that 
you want to if your class ask about them then you could do that and then some of them i've put a show reasoning box and it shows some potential reasoning it's not meant to be a definitive this is the only reasoning you can use to prove these things and you might want to have a discussion with the class about whether it's necessary to prove things hint in mathematics it does become necessary but quite often gcse students don't like the art of proof because it feels very pedantic and formal because it is but if someone was needing to be convinced because they weren't convinced that's why we have to resort to that and that discussion is worth having with students of all sorts of ages, whether or not they need to know it for their exam. I hope this is a useful file. Click through all the things and enjoy using it with your classes.